there, crafty friends. It's Diane, the Creative Inkster. Today is Monday, June 19th, 2023, and I'm playing with the new, to me, it only just arrived, inked and tiled stamp set with these gorgeous images. And as a bundle, it actually has two punches. This one here, which we're going to not so much use tonight, but I see lots of possibilities with it. And this octagon shape one. I hope I have that right. There you go. You math people out there, make sure you get me straight on that. And how I made this fun fold card that in this case really helps to show off your pattern paper. So many times we put this layer on the front of the card and we cover it up with something, ribbon or an image or something, and, and we kind of lose a little bit of that beauty. And so I thought we would Reverse that, switch it up a little bit and try this. So this is the card we're going to make, probably the same colors. I'll show you a few tips and tricks along the way. And um, we will get started on that. If you're out there watching live, let me know. Always love to connect with you. And if you're watching the replay, leave me a comment and we'll circle back. All right, so with this gorgeous bundle of inked and tiled, there's also in the suite some patterned paper. And the colors in this are quite uh, light and muted. I'm just going to move that off the shiny, off uh, shining off the uh, the lights. So it's called Inked Botanicals Six by Six Paper. So it's already cut to your six by six size, and it has in it Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Lost Lagoon, Petal Pink, and Pool Party. So I've got a couple of those colors here. I just don't have Crushed Curry. Oh, and Pool Party. I don't think. No, I grabbed some of these pieces. And this is very vanilla. So some of, most of the papers that we have typically have white in them as one of the base patterns. And there's a strip of white through there. And you'll see it here and there. But it has a real very vanilla feel to it. So that's why I use that as my base color. So this is the pattern I've used here with the leaves heading up. I think maybe... I will pick a different pattern, but use the same idea. What shall we go with? So I'm going to keep this one because I love this. And I've got a whole class with that in mind. So that's one I want to have as many sheets of as possible for this. We do that, don't we? So let's do this. Let's do this one. This one's pretty as well. So Double-sided paper with those gorgeous colors. Lost Lagoon wasn't in color, it's back. Pool Party, Crushed Curry, Calypso Coral, a nice warm palette. Your light petal pink and your very vanilla. So let's toss that to the side. Now this piece here is a standard four by five and a quarter. So we'll start by cutting our paper down. And I'll show you a few tricks with this if you haven't already learned them on your own. When I have a six by six sheet that I'm going to cut into, I'm just gonna try to get that shine. Um, I take a look on the back because if I'm going to cut a two inch piece off, I want to make sure that however the pattern is on the back, that I might want to be able to use it to its fullest. So for example, it's not really an issue on this one. But if there's stripes, for example, I could cut this one here or here. So I, I turn it over because likely if I've got a two inch strip, I'm gonna want the flex to be going horizontally. I'm not sure that I find it as interesting going vertically if I was using just a two inch strip. So I kind of take a look at those things when I'm cutting into a sheet of paper. So we're gonna make it four inches across. And that gives me that long two by six. And then this is going to be five and a quarter, but it's also four inches wide. So if I wanted to, I could reserve either side of this and either trim it down and add it to these panels, stick it on the back if I had a vanilla on the back. So there, there's options, right? I could put it down here. So we'll hang on to that piece. And then we're going to mat it onto 
Where's my card base? I think my card base on this one, I was switching it up from my sample to be um, this Calypso Coral, which is five and a half by eight and a half. It's already cut, it was sitting in my bin. So when I cut into a piece of cardstock um, to make a layer, or a card base of five and a half by eight and a half, then I stick the other one aside. Usually I'll have a a line in it uh, for scoring, but I'll stick it aside so that I have it ready for the next time I need a card base. So we're going to use Calypso Coral. So I've scored it at four and a quarter. Then I'm going to also score this piece in half at two and an eighth. That takes that one four and a quarter piece in half. Okay, so we have two score lines. You see them there? There we go. So I'll fold this piece in and this piece over. We need a bone folder. I'm going to need to cut something more. Oops. So we'll do our four and a quarter and then our two and an eighth piece that's folding back. There we go. Okay, and now we want to put some pieces on the inside. So I could put this right in here like this, but I loved how it had a layer in between the pattern paper and the card base of a little bit thinner. So this time I'm going to go with Lost Lagoon. And if my layer is four inch and my card base is four and a quarter, then I need a piece across that's four and an eighth. That will get it somewhere in between these two layers. And down here, between five and a quarter and five and a half, we have five and three eighths. So what we're going to do is cut this to, I'm going to cut it in half. I just tend to cut my paper in half. I'll cut it at five and a half, so I have half a sheet of paper to, to play with. I want it to be four and an eighth. So just line that up on your paper trimmer by five and three eighths. I'm going to cut that hair off of there. And that's going to give me a matted piece. Now, I could do something with what's on the inside. Because I'm using a color, colored card base versus vanilla or white, I could punch some shapes out of this if I wanted to. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have an idea specifically what I would punch out. But you can die cut or cut, cut a piece out of this, and then you'll not be wasting that. So there, we're ready with that layer. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do vanilla, but we also need to do a layer here. So our vanilla, it's easier to do the smaller piece first, measures one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. We're just going to double check that. Yeah, one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Let's see what I've got here. Is that five and a quarter? Not quite, we can just trim that down. And one and seven eighths. So basically a quarter of an inch smaller than the panel. One and seven eighths. Now I'll keep this piece because that'll be great for doing a layer, or a label rather. So there's these pieces. Now we need a piece of also Lost Lagoon to match. We want these to match. And it's going to be, so if these are one and seven eighths and the panel is two and an eighth, we want this to be two inches wide by five and three eighths long. So five and three eighths again, two inches and two inches and four. I just gonna cut this down so I have one nice big piece. Cut this to five and three eighths. Allow a cut a little sliver off like we did on the last one, and cut this at two. There we go. That's our paper all cut. Done. Right, so this is how we're going to layer everything up. We're going to do some stamping though first before we layer these vanilla pieces together. But they'll go on there. And this piece is going to go on here. So let's get this layered up. Grab our glue. I'm starting to use, since I did that video, 
I think it's posted already, but I did a video on things to do with your liquid glue and how that has two ends. So I might be giving away a little sneak peek of what's coming up this week. I've forgotten what day that one is airing, but I'm trying to use the wider end. It spreads really nicely that way. I know everybody's not a fan of liquid glue, but I certainly am. I feel like it goes a long way, and I have trouble with the um, stamp and seal and stamp and seal plus tearing my pattern paper. It's so darn strong, so I am more apt to use tear and tape actually. All right, let's get this layer down here. And look at that, it's a beautiful focal point. Hi, Brenda, for our card. And you can add something uh, not too dimensionalized, not too big uh, on it, because you're gonna wanna fold it. But you could add something in there too. You can just leave it just in its beauty like this. I'm not sure that I would put uh, any kind of embellishments unless they were more flat and I put them more on the right hand side because this has to fold over to go into the card. All right, so I'm gonna get that placement there. Now let's get our stamping going here. So we have two panels. We're gonna use Petal Pink and Lost Lagoon. Find the stamp set now that I've tucked it away. We've got a couple of beautiful big pieces, so I'm just going to get these on the blocks and then I'll show them to you. A couple of large blocks here. And this one, this, it's like a cone flower. This one's really quite, quite beautiful. I'm just wondering if I can get it straight. No, I think I need to put it a bit on a diagonal. That's what I'm str not struggling, but what I'm hesitating with. There we go. Uh, what else are we going to use on here? We have this one here too, which as you can see on this flower, on this card that I made before, I have two colors. So I'm going to explain two different ways, but only show you one way to do this. And I'll need a little bit smaller block. Okay. No, I don't need any. I don't need. So let's start with this layer here. I think that's all we know. We need happy birthday. Another little block. There we go. So on this first one, I wanted this larger leaf, but I didn't want it to really take over the card. So I stamped it off once. We do what we call second generation stamping. So I ink it up with Lost Lagoon. Could also have used Pool Party instead. I like the Lost Lagoon. It's quite dark, so we will stamp it off once and then stick it down on one of these panels, like so. And there's just a really nice light layer. That's it for that one. Although for this one, why don't we do, why don't we put it on both and just see what we think. Once again, I've inked it up, stamp it off once, and I'll put it on this layer too. Let's see what we think. Change it up a little bit. You know, for stamp as we go, and that's how I keep from getting stamps inks on paper I don't want them on. Then the next thing we're gonna do on this panel is the stem or the corn flower, corn flower. So we have a stem and we have a flower. Now we can use markers. I don't have the new markers for Lost Lagoon. So I thought, well, I gotta come up with a different plan then. So let's mask off the flowers. I could do a couple things. Um, so let me back up. If I had the markers, I could marker up the flowers in pink and the bottom in Lost Lagoon, and that would be nice. Um, you have to breathe on it to moisten it up and, get, and make it uh, the ink activated again. But I do find you get a much lighter impression. And I think the petal pink is light enough to begin with. Another option 
is to mask it up, which is what I'm going to do. And I can either stamp the whole thing in pink and then mask it off. But I think the best way, I think, is just to do the masking first. So I'm going to put two little of these one by two sticky notes right over top of the flowers where oh, that, that piece I want to, I don't want to hide that little bit of the stem. All right, so I've just covered up my flowers. Let's flip it over so you can see. And I'm going to ink up my leaves. So I'm just going to ink over top. And I'm completely fine with it messing up here because I'm going to lift those two pieces up. And I'm going to place this down over top. Here we go. And oh, darn, I know what I meant to do. <gasps> darn, I meant to do the pink and then I got, I got thinking. All right, all right, so we'll do it again. No problem, because there's no way I'll be able to line it up again. I'm good, but I'm not that good. Let's try this again. So we take our piece of post-it note. You can also buy masking tape. You can buy it on a roll from Amazon. I personally don't. I find that these uh, post-its work great, very inexpensive. All right, so we're inking it up again. We're going to peel off the masks. Those are now garbage. And now we're going to add the petal pink part. So I found that I could do this fairly easily because I can see just exactly where that pink's going to go. Because as I'm adding the ink, I see it getting wet, so I know that I can go a little bit closer to the stem. And then same over here on the point. This stamp is particularly easy to do this with. There we go. And I haven't transferred any ink to my pink. So I do want to moisten it a little bit. So I just breathe on it a little to moisten it up. And there we go. And that's how we get two colors when you don't have a marker to work with. Another thing you could do is you could take a stamp and blend, uh, no, a blending, a blender pen, pick up the ink and put it directly on your stamp. This was quick and easy when you get that um, masking going right. All right, we'll move that out of the way. And now I'm going to use, now I can't really flip that guy over. I'm going to grab another piece of white or vanilla. And we're going to cut a piece off. And it is one and seven eighths by five and three eighths. So like I said, I usually just cut my paper to five and a half. And I have a smaller piece to work with. I'll cut this to one and seven eighths. and then trim it down to five and three eighths. That way I don't have a lot of extra waste. I have seen people cut into a sheet and cut into a sheet repeatedly um, until they have a whole bunch of small bits left over and I don't wanna do that. So that's this one here. And then for this stamp, the smaller one, we're gonna repeat that process. We have to clean in between if we wanna do it more than once. So we're gonna grab our sticky notes we're going to cover up the flower. And this one works particularly well as, as well because the stems kind of shoot up at exactly the same place. So we'll ink it up, peel off our mask, ink up the petal pink part. I just start on the outside and I carefully move forward. Now if I have a little piece that's missing, it's okay. It's totally okay. I'm going to put one down here. I'm going to repeat this. And then I'm going to clean my stamp because we won't be able to, to line it up really nicely on the ink pad if we are not careful with it. I suppose I could reuse those when they dry, but I really don't. So there, that would be an improvement. So we will mask off. We're going to stamp in the Lost Lagoon first and then add the petal pink. There we go. And put this 
flower over here. There we go, and that's how we get some beautiful two tones. And then the last thing to do is add the happy birthday to the card. Now, I have noticed that I didn't put my label on too straight, so I'm going to have to practice on here on my scratch paper to see, lining it up on the line, if I need to adjust my self on it a little bit. So it's not perfectly um, straight on, but over to the right just a little bit. There we go. And that's just something I find this happens when I put my labels on. Sometimes I don't do a great job and that's okay. I'm just, I know I need to work with them afterwards that way. All right, I think we're ready to assemble and embellish. So we'll pull our card back in card base with our beautiful pattern paper. We are going to mat these two pieces here on Lost Lagoon. What a pretty set of color combination this is. It, it, in a way it's a bit like early fall colors for me. And then I can see using them for the summer as well. Petal pink um, is not, and Calypso core, not really colors that I'm drawn to, but I, I like with the warmth of the Lost Lagoon. I need to, it's gonna bug me, it's not quite even. And then this is a little bit thinner matting than we're used to. Typically we leave an eighth of an inch all the way around by cutting the layer one quarter of an inch larger, the mat layer. And um, this time we're using an eighth of an inch, which makes it a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. So quite a bit of a tighter fit, but it has a really nice look. Okay, so what happened here? It doesn't look like I trimmed this in exactly the right spot. That's okay, we can fix that. No one is going to notice, because this is going to be the inside layer, so it's going to go like that. And we're ready to glue these guys down. So I'm trying to use up a whole bunch of glue. I have a whole, I don't know, six mm, liquid glue bottles on the go from my class and uh, the class where I provide the adhesive in Elmar, in uh, Breslau, where I do a monthly card class at the community center. And um, so they're starting to get pretty low and the ladies are finding it more difficult, as you know, when you use liquid glue to get the glue to work, work for you. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for popping in. I hope we get done before you gotta scoot off to start supper. All right, so there's our two layers. And then this suite also has a gorgeous ribbon. It's bordered ribbon, and it's very much like the na Night of Navy we had in the spring, but it has just a little bit different feel. It's very cotton feeling. So I'm gonna do a small, small bow with this. It ties beautifully from that perspective for getting um, a bit of a flat bow because it doesn't wanna curl up. It, it lies lovely and flat. Okay, there we go. Trim these bits off. So that is Lost Lagoon bordered ribbon. And we'll put a little blue dot on to affix it into place. And then just a couple of flat embellishments. So I was reading another demonstrator's blog and uh, noticed and, and found something that she's noticed, which is that typically Stampin' Up! is using more and more flat embellishments, which are great for putting things in the mail. They don't tend to be so tall and pokey through. So these flat adhesive back pearls are perfect uh, indication of that. I like these. They are different sizes. Now, at first I didn't, wasn't drawn to them because they're not uniform in size. They have a little bit different shapes, but I love the iridescent to them. And there's basically two sizes. So I'm gonna include them with 
where my flowers would meet at the base. There we are, and that's flat adhesive-backed pearls. Beautiful iridescent shine to them. Quite nice. Tuck those guys away. And I think our card is finished, and we're just about on time. So there it is in a Lost Lagoon card base on the right and a Calypso Coral on the left and pattern paper. So I see that you could do this with any of our pretty pattern papers, especially when they have a, a busy pattern that you don't want to cover up. And with the Designer Series paper being on sale this month, it's a great time to stock up. They are 15% off pretty much every Designer Series paper in the annual catalog is in the sale as well there we've just heard today that there's going to be a free shipping day on wednesday june 21st so you would save um 11 percent on your shipping in canada if you um want if, if you want to place a smaller order and pick up in guelph then uh, your options are let me know i'm going to be placing an order by noon and uh, you can save yourself some some money there on the shipping so enjoy it thank you so much for watching and have a great evening bye for now